Hi guys, welcome back to Quantum Quandary. Today, we're doing something I was really excited to do. The diffusion equation, we're gonna derive it. So, let's get right into it. What is the diffusion equation? Well, it's supposed to model the movement of atoms, molecules, particles, whatever, right? And it's also gonna be pretty much the same as the heat equation. And what we really wanna look at is how particles, points, whatever, move through a lattice, right? So we're gonna draw a one-dimensional lattice here, just a few squares, right? They're right next to each other, of course. Um, let me make that a little nicer. <clears throat> okay, we got three squares and we can label these densities or temperatures or whatever. Let's say that they're de densities because we are deriving the diffusion equation. We're gonna have density u i minus one, u i, u i plus one, and they're gonna be ranging, maybe it's infinite, maybe it's finite, who knows, who cares, right? We just wanna know what happens on these three because that's the general situation. So we can say that there is some sort of rate of diffusion, call it R, right? So maybe now we're at some time t, and at this time we know the density is ui of t, right? Or ui plus one of t. Okay, and then at another time t plus delta t, we know that, I don't know, like, R, yeah, R of these are going to leave half of them here and half of them here. Similarly, R of these are going to leave half of them here, half of them here. And of course, the same here. So we keep losing, or well, there's movement, right? So how do we write this? Well, we could say that UI of t plus delta t is actually just ui of t times 1 minus r half minus r half. I could have written this as r. Why didn't I? Well, this is the loss to the left. This is the loss to the right. So I just want to make that clear. And it's going to be easier for manipulation later. Okay, so we've got that. And then we gain, um, we gain ui minus one and ui plus one times r half, right? So for ui minus one, we get r half to ui. And from ui plus one, we get r half to ui. Now this r obviously, needs to be between zero and one. It's it's a rate, right? It's some sort of fraction or whatever, some number between zero and one. Okay, so this is our, our UI of t plus delta t. And this already looks like some sort of rate of change. We wanna make it look like a time derivative. So let's have this one on the left-hand side. So we have ui t plus delta t minus ui of t equals, and now here I can do another thing. I can, I can just pull out r half, and then I can have ui plus 1 minus ui, and then minus ui minus ui minus 1. Check that these signs are fine, but it's pretty trivial. And when we write it like this, we get another difference. Now note that all of this, this whole bracket is just of t. There's no plus delta t here. Okay, and we can think about what derivatives look like if we have some sort of, let's, let's just remind ourselves that if we have dy by dx, that's just y of x plus delta x minus y of x over delta x as the limit 
says that x delta x tends to zero. Okay. Okay. Pretty simple. So we've already got something like that here, and we can transform it to a time derivative. But let's just see what to do with this. We've got this i plus one and i, the i minus one. We we see that the i values increase. This is like a programming problem, right? <laughs> the i values they increase um, as the well as we go rightmost. Okay, so we can call this some x-axis, right? And we could just imagine that these changes in i are very small. So in the discrete situation, we have the delta i is one, right? So we have i, i plus one, i plus two. But in this continual continuum approximation or, you know, limit, the continuum limit, we're going to go to dx, right? So we're going to transform from ui, uh, well, ui of t to u of x t. So before x could only take integer values, now we allow, we allow it anything. So obviously this is a fairly crude approximation depending on uh, how uh, zoomed in or zoomed out you are. If you're very zoomed out, then it's pretty good. Like if you look at a beach and you look at grains of sand, they look pretty continuous. The desert looks continuous, but if you zoom in, you're going to see spikes and like there's a grain here, there's no, not a grain there and so on. So that's, that's kind of the, you know, difference. Sometimes it, it's a good approximation, sometimes it's not. But for our case, it's going to be fine. So now we're going to write this whole thing in the continuum approximation or the continuum limit. So we have u of x t plus delta t minus u of x t. And we, we're going to add this delta t that we mentioned. And of course, we have to multiply by delta t to make it equal to 1. And then here we have r half, big, big bracket. And then we have, oh, we don't need this one. Um, then we have u, i plus 1 is just x plus delta x. Remember, because delta i is equal to 1. Okay, so x plus delta x uh, t minus u of x t over delta x. Um, okay, let me just put this down here because I'm not going to have space. Yeah. And minus u of x t minus u of x minus delta x t over delta x. And I'm just going to add an extra delta x over here. We don't even need these brackets then. Mm, maybe I'll put them in just in case. So I'm dividing by delta x squared effectively, so I need to multiply by delta x squared. Okay, we've got that figured out. And now let's see what we have. This guy here when delta t approaches zero, is nothing but ut. This guy, and of course of x of t, x of t, yeah, x and t. Uh, this guy over here is going to be u of x t, sorry, u sub x of x t. And then this one is u sub x of x minus delta x t. Yeah, I mean, clearly it's just it's just the one on the left shifted by delta x. And then this whole thing, this term, this term is the difference of derivatives. It's just the second derivative. So this is u x x of technically x minus delta x t. But since delta x tends to zero, this guy is just zero. So we have this. ux x of x t. 
where of course the, the subscript denotes differentiation. So this is del u by del x squared, right? And this is del u by del t. Okay, now we can write it like that. Okay, so what we get is del u by del t equals r half delta x squared over delta t del squared u by del x squared. And then we just call this b. We uh, kind of say that as delta t tends to zero, we want delta x squared to tend to zero. So, you know, as we lower the time step, we quadratically lower the space step. That's kind of what, what, what it means, but you don't need to uh, trouble yourself with it. So we define d as this limit. We could say delta operates to zero um, of r half delta x squared over delta t. Okay, and so we get that ut is d uxx. And that's the diffusion equation. Hope you guys liked it. Bye-bye.